Welcome back. So um, let's, now that we know there's a change tracker, let's try and use it for something. And what I want to do is pretty much say, you should not attach a customer to our context if it's already there. And how do we know if a customer is already in the context? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If I just copy this line that we used last lesson, I can actually do an AND clause right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the entries right here is actually an I enumerable of customers. You already played around with that, so it's not it's not a big thing, right? So what I want to do is I want to take that list of customers and then I'll do a first or default, right? You've already used that as well. Now we're going to get back, um, not a customer actually, but a customer entry. So I'll call it a CE for customer entry. And that's a special class that we have available inside NT Framework in the change tracker. So the customer entity has an access point to the actual entity. Okay, the customer entry, sorry, has an access point to the actual entity. So this is the customer now. Dot ID, that pretty much means that now I have the ID for each customer. And what I'm looking for is, of course, that ID should match this customer's ID, the one on the order, right? Because if that is there, that pretty much means that the customer exists in the database. But if it is null, right, if it is null, then I want to attach the customer. So if the order actually has a customer, it's not null, and the context does not find that customer with that ID inside the database, then attach it, right? If you, any of these are wrong, then don't attach it because it's probably already attached or we don't need it. I hope that makes sense. So that's what we're going to do. Let's just get rid of this right here. You don't need that anymore. And do the same inside the customer repo, get rid of that, remove the breakpoint. Let's just try and run this now and see if that solved our problem right here. I'll just jump back to the repository because that's where the real magic happens. Now, already now I can tell you that this is something, this is one way of doing it. There's a lot of great ways and they are actually also built in a few ways. I just want you guys to understand the change tracker right here to start using it um, later on because it's a great way to kind of track and see what you actually have in your context right now compared to what's inside the database. So let's just try and see if this actually solved our issue back into our application right here. I'll just get a specific customer, there we go. And then I'll try and post a new order for that customer. And hopefully we don't get the exception. Nope, the exception is not there anymore. Let's just try and go back and get all customer, or get the customer and you'll notice that he just got his new uh, order right here. And let's just try and jump back and add a new order to this guy. And again back here and do another request again and everything's running as it's supposed to. So it looks fine. It seems that we have the right solution right here for the problem. And I might as well also tell you that this solution could be made uh, simpler with a method. So next lesson we'll try and look at the update and make it even better. See you next time. Have fun.